Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Got one of those headlines that gets your attention. And a whole bunch of people sent it to me. It involves things that we all love so much. But here's the thing. There is a little bit of a backstory to this that we do not know. And so I want to, at the end of the story, make sure we make it very, very clear what you would do if this happened to you and um, what types of mistakes can be made in cases like this. I don't know if people here made these mistakes, but we'll double check that. So from WGN, Kelly Davis and Eli Ong wrote this. City of Chicago forces suburban couple to pay red light violation that isn't theirs. So it's a red light violation. It's one of them camera tickets. And they got it in the mail presumably saying, hey, we got a photograph of you running a red light. Uh, isn't that you right there? Pay this fine. And uh, when they looked at it, they said, wait, but that's not us. It's not us. So a suburban couple says the city of Chicago is coercing them into paying a red light ticket for a car that isn't theirs. So they're not saying that the car in the picture isn't running the red light. They're saying, that ain't us. That ain't our car. And I'm simply pointing this out because you might have more than one defense to a claim against you. I didn't do it. Oh, wait, someone else did it, but it wasn't me. Or whatever you're claiming didn't happen. These are all possible things, right? So the residents of Barrington, uh, it's a husband and wife, received a $100 red light violation in the mail four months ago. The catch is the car on camera is not theirs, and the camera misread the plate. And this is one of those problems, is there's a camera that takes a photograph of a license plate, oftentimes at night, oftentimes accompanied by a bright flash, often from a weird angle. And some letters on some license plates can be hard to read from certain angles. So it's clearly not ours, the man said. We weren't there or nothing. It's got a Kansas City Chiefs decal on it, and we wouldn't own one of those. <laughs> now, that's actually a fantastic argument. If you said, Steve, I got a photograph of your Viper going through a red light in Chicago, I'd say, no, you don't. Never driven that Viper to Chicago. They go, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Here's a picture of your Viper and that Ohio State Buckeyes football bumper sticker on the back. I would, I would literally, <laughs> I think my phone followed me in here. Did that make it on camera? I don't know. <laughs> I would literally sue somebody for defamation if they claimed that I had put an Ohio State Buckeyes bumper sticker on my car and drove it in public. Now, if you're a fan of theirs, that's fine. But I'm in Michigan. I'm a fan of the University of Michigan. So he goes, there's a Kansas City Chiefs decal on it. We wouldn't own one of those. And like I said, that's an airtight defense. A couple appealed the violation, but a judge ruled against them. After that, they sent the Department of Finance proof that the car and plate isn't theirs. But it was also refused and sent back. So they Now, here's the thing. When they say it was refused and sent back, does that mean the letter was returned to them unopened? Or did they actually review it and say, no, we're refusing your claim and send it back? So the man said, we're completely innocent, yet they want us to jump through hoops. Where it stands today, the fine has doubled and gone to collections. We've proven to them that this was not the license plate, yet nobody's responding. The wife says, this case should be closed. We should not have to pay the fine. And so if you look at the photographs, that they show, it's the bad, you know, stoplight camera photo from above and back. And when you enhance it and blow it up and do all kinds of things that, you know, you only used to be able to do on Mission Impossible, uh, you can see that the letters are wrong. It's not the same letters that they think it is. And the Kansas City Chiefs bumper sticker is quite visible also. So WGN reached out to the city's Department of Finance for comment who said they would look into this but have not followed up since. So the first thing I have to tell you is it doesn't make it clear here because it says the couple appealed the violation but a judge ruled against them. I'd like to know why. Why did the judge rule against them? Because if you actually stood in front of a judge, the judge would probably say, I'm ruling against you because of thus. And what I would urge people to understand is that any time you get accused of something by the government, whether it's accused of committing a felony, uh, if you get indicted by a grand jury, uh, or they send you a thing in the mail that says you owe us $12 for parking downtown, any time they make an accusation against you, there's a process to go through where you will actually be able to contest what they're saying. And I've talked before about due process. And due process at a minimum means that you are 
informed of the charges against you, and given a meaningful opportunity to respond to them. Opportunity to be heard, they often say. So what that means is, here's a ticket. If you want to fight it, show up here and tell us why it's not you. And we'll let you tell us. So the question is, did these people follow that procedure properly? Now, it says that a judge ruled against them. That implies that they got in front of the judge. The question is, why did the judge rule against them? Did the judge say, even though this photograph's clearly not your car, I'm finding you liable? Or did the judge say, uh, you guys filed your claim late? I I've been an attorney now for 31 years. And I've had so many people tell me, both as it happened to them in the past or it's happening to them now, they come in, they say, Steve, I got this thing that says that I owe this money and I don't. And I look at it and I go, okay, so and let's just use similar facts to what we're talking about today. Okay, so you got a red light camera ticket. Uh, what does it say? Well, it says here that if you contest this, you've got 30 days to file a written objection. Did you? Uh, I've had people say, no, it's not me. Why, why should I respond if it's not me? And I'd say, well, because they think it's you. And there's an interesting thing that happens in the law, and by interesting, I mean bad, if it happens to you, is if they raise allegations or charges against you and you do not respond to them timely, they will assume that their allegations are true. And that can often result in something that's called a default. Someone serves you with a lawsuit. You open it up and it's 35 pages of legal gibberish and it's got your name at the top, but it says that you were in Wyoming last year throwing a wild party at a hotel and you, and you destroyed the room. And you've never been to Wyoming. So you just take it and throw it away. No, 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 <laughs> don't, don't, don't do that. Because if you don't respond or answer appropriately, it's going to say, well, you must have done it because you're not contesting it. And so in many states, Michigan included, the summons you get with the lawsuit says, at the top, notice to you with your name on it. And it'll say, one, you're being sued. Two, attached here is the lawsuit that describes the allegations against you made by somebody. And it'll say, three, if you do not answer timely, you may be defaulted. And it actually says we highly recommend you consult an attorney or take whatever necessary steps to defend yourself if you choose to do so. But if you don't choose to do so, you can wind up in default. Now, I don't know that that's what happened here. I have no idea. It doesn't say. The details are not clear. But it does say they appeared in front of a judge. Now, I have seen people before who ignored something and then later said, well, now I'm getting these things saying I owe this money. I can't owe the money. It's not me. I wasn't in Wyoming. Well, now they have a judgment against you or whatever the equivalent is in a setting like this. And now there are procedures to get those set aside, but setting aside a default is much more difficult than fighting the complaint in the first place, especially if you've got a good defense. And I've actually seen someone, and I can think of dozens of examples in the 31 years I've been practicing law, where someone's come into my office and says, Steve, I got a problem. I just got this in the mail, and it's someone trying to execute on my stuff. And I go, okay, and they go, and I got this, and it's a judgment. They go, and I got this, and it's a lawsuit. And I got this, and it's a summons. They're, they're telling me the story with the documents. And I go, well, what, what happened to the lawsuit? I don't know. I didn't respond to it. Why not? It's not me. Well, it's got your name on it. Yeah, but that wasn't me. I've never been to Wyoming. Okay. And so then they got a judgment against you. Well, but that's stupid because the judgment's based on something I didn't do. Okay. You might know that to be true. I might know that to be true. The court and the plaintiff who sued you thinks it's true because they filed a lawsuit. You didn't respond to it. Now they got a judgment against you. So there are methods in the court rules and various laws out there that say that if someone gets a judgment against you, there's things you can do to overturn a judgment, like file an appeal. So you can file an appeal, right? But there's time frames for that. And so it'll often say, for instance, you get 21 days to file an appeal of right. And if you blow that deadline the judgment becomes good and they can execute on it. Now, can you go into court on day 22 and attempt to overturn judgment? Yes, you can. But they usually say at that point, you've got to show some extraordinary circumstances as to why you should be allowed to get a judgment overturned when you could have come to court before and fought it. 
Now, I know some people are going to catch that. They're going to go, but Steve, what if I didn't know about it? There's one possible excuse. So let's suppose that somebody in Wyoming thinks you trashed their hotel room. They hire an attorney who hires a process server who comes out, looks for you, can't find you, and throws the papers in the bushes and says, yeah, I served them. So you'd have to hire an attorney to dig through the records and find whether or not you were served or how they say you were served. And then if you actually were not served, the failure of service could become good grounds to overturn the default. So getting back to the judge turned down their request to have the case thrown out. Okay, Did the judge turn it down on a technical ground such as you guys are too late? Or did the judge look at it and go, no, these license plates look the same to me? Now... There's almost always avenues of appeal beyond that, right? And so it says here that they wrote a letter to the finance department. I don't know if that's a proper appeal route. You know, so in Michigan, there's different courts and different levels. And if you lose at one court, you appeal to the next level. And generally speaking, you get one other swing beyond the first round. So if you go to a district court and lose on something in general, you can appeal it to the circuit court. You got that appeal as a matter of right if you lost at the circuit court, to go up to the Court of Appeals, you have to ask for permission to file an appeal. But they base whether they grant that appeal on, generally, on how good your argument is. And they also look at it and go, yeah, but they lost at the lower court already once, and then they lost an appeal once. But the question becomes, why did the judge turn that down? And we don't know. So if they actually got in front of the judge and said, Your Honor, compare the license plates, these are different, you'd think the judge would go, I agree with you. But if the judge said, uh, the rules say you're supposed to bring this to our attention within 30 days, and it's beyond that, why is that? Now, I'll grant you, if I was a judge, and I had a couple in front of me, and they said, we can prove this ain't us, look at the pictures, and we should have filed this 30 days ago, and we didn't, but we're here now. If I was a judge, I would probably say, okay, let me give you a lecture, <laughs> just for 30 seconds, and then I'm going to rule in your favor. But the problem can be that sometimes the processes in place, especially in big cities like Chicago and Detroit and New York and San Francisco and Los Angeles, is that the system just kind of grinds along as it grinds along. And so it's possible, again, it's, I'm speculating here, but it's possible that if someone filed their appeal of the ticket too late, the initial appeal, too late, a judge might look at it and go, well, I, I, I can't grant this now. Because you missed the deadline to have this hearing done properly, and it's already in the system over here. But I assure you that there is a way to appeal that. The only question I have is, is it sending something to the Department of Finance, or is it following up through this judicial procedure? The Department of Finance might be part of that. I don't know. I don't know. But when I hear stories like this, the first question I always have is, what process was used and did they follow it? But number two, it's a kind of tale that we need to look at and understand that so many people in their busy workaday lives get something in the mail and it goes, you've got a parking ticket in Nagani, Michigan. And they look at it and they go, Nagani? Like, <laughs> Steve Leto knows where that is, but I don't. Uh, yeah, but the point is you got to fight it. So you don't fight it, they assume you're guilty. And I know people who say, you know, something, that's, that's not right. You know, if, if I accuse you of something and you stand with your mouth shut, you just might not want to argue with me. Yeah, in real life, if you and I are having a discussion, you accuse me of something stupid, I might just look at it and walk away. But when it's the system, a city, a state, a county, the government, saying an accusation against you that you are not liable for or ain't you, you better stand up and say, no, nope, that's not me. And make sure you follow the process. So one thing I'll tell you is that if you get that ticket in the mail, I assure you that on that card, on the front or the back, or possibly both, it'll say, if you wish to dispute this, here's what you do. And do that explicitly. Don't put it off. Don't wait the last minute. If it says, write to us, write to them, certified or currency requested, get the green card back. Uh, and do everything you can, follow up on it. Because the number of things I've seen in court in 31 years, where people said, Your Honor, I, I, I got this thing, didn't respond in time, and now I've spent all this time trying to straighten out that one thing. And it's, it's 
so much easier to take care of it at the front end. So again, I don't know. The story from these people is that they got the ticket. It's clearly not them. They fought it. They lost. And they can't seem to find anybody who will just apply common sense to this. So I do feel for them. And again, based on what they're saying here, it's a crazy story. But then again, it's Chicago. And Chicago is, shall we say, famous for issues with uh, tickets and things of that nature. So City of Chicago forces a suburban couple to pay a red light violation that isn't theirs. By the way, I should also add that a lot of times there are places that say you must pay the fine first, then appeal it. Why? <laughs> I guess they want to borrow your money. But if they say that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do. So Kelly Davis and Eli Ong wrote that for WGN. Several people sent it to me, including Hamza. Thank you very much. And I got to give you one quick program note update. Uh, it's happening again. I did a video a few months ago called something to the effect of Beware the Steve Leto Scam. And there's something happening on YouTube where people go around and they invent uh, profiles that look like somebody else. So it'll say Steve Leto Telegram or something. And then what they'll do is they'll go under my videos and post comments in response to other people's comments and go, you've won a free iPad, contact me. And it says Steve Leto on Telegram. And I started getting emails from people going, Steve, um, are you giving away iPads? I'm like, no. What would make you think that? And they go, well, go look. And they often go on at like 3 o'clock in the morning my time and post two of them. And so I got to go look for them. And when I find them, I can remove them and I can also block them off the page. But I have to see them first. So I was all over this for about a month when it first started happening. It finally died down. I thought it went away. Rick Beato, the music guy, a few other guys I know on, on, on YouTube, uh, Vin, uh, Vin Wiki at Bullion, we've talked about how annoying this is and the fact that, that unfortunately YouTube can't do a whole lot about it because they're just bots setting up these accounts. And, and it doesn't actually say Steve Leto to go S symbol. T symbol, E symbol. And they purposely do that so if somebody were to set up a filter looking for these things, they wouldn't find it that easily. So what I got to tell you is I got a note last night from somebody, and I got the email about 3 o'clock in the morning. And a guy said, hey, Steve, there's somebody impersonating you, and says, like, text me on Telegram, Steve Leto, or something like that. And he said, you know, so you should be aware of this. And I wrote him back and said, thank you very much. I said, but it would really help me if you encounter that, and you're so inclined, if you click on the blue for their name, it'll take you to their page where you'll see nothing to indicate that it's me and just the name, whatever it is, Instagram, Telegram, Facebook, MySpace, Steve Leto. And then I'm not asking you to do anything other than cut and paste the URL, the actual web address, okay? And email that to me, steve at latoslaw.com. And if you email me that web address, I can click on it and boom, and one click, make them all go away. Every single one that they posted the night before. So if you're so inclined, and, and you don't have to, you don't have to, but I'm just saying, I know there's a few people out there who'd say, you know, I'm happy to help you with this. So if you see one of those, click on their profile, get their URL, email it to me. I will then click on it and block them from the page and we'll get rid of this nonsense. Uh, it's, again, like I said, it's annoying that we can't do more about it, but with a little bit of help from my friends, I think we can. So thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. Solitude is different from loneliness, and it doesn't have to be a lonely kind of thing.